Happy New Year, side trekkers, and welcome to your look at what's coming up in 2024. Welcome to Side Trek, your sci fi TV and movie channel. So, I've picked some of the movies that we have definitely going to be getting in the first part of 2024 and some of the TV series too. Also, we're going to have a little bit of a look at what we think is rumored that's going to be going into production this year, even though we might not quite get it on our screens just yet. First of all, let's look at the movies. So we're going to be getting June part two. Now, I have to say that this has been delayed repeatedly, mainly because of the strikes and other issues on set. But this is something that I think is going to be worth waiting for. Finally, we're going to be getting to see the second part of this epic. I loved the first part. I thought Jason Momoa in particular was brilliant. The lad that played Wonka was probably my favourite movie last year, and he's going to be returning as well. So, June Part 2 is the first thing I'm going to say to you to look forward to in 2024. We're also getting a new Alien movie, Alien Romulus. This movie really is going to be a part of a much bigger Alien franchise because we're getting the TV series as well. Disney are not messing around with this. They 100% are trying to take advantage of this franchise. So, Alien Romulus is going to be the first part of that. But which Disney are we actually going to be getting with this? Are we going to be getting the Disney that can't seem to make a movie to save its life? Or are we going to be getting the traditional juggernaut production company we were at one point used to? Let's hope that Disney have learned its lessons from the last few years and have actually figured out how to make this movie half decent. Because the alien xenomorph creature is one of those iconic bad guys. Really, if you can't make a decent alien movie, you shouldn't be in the movie business. Mickey 17 is a movie starring Robert Patterson. He is Batman, but he's also Mickey and Mickey and Mickey and Mickey. This movie is about a long space journey, basically. And every time Mickey is the, the guy that is aboard the ship and is the sort of like the explorer dies, um, a new version of him is regenerated. And each version of Mickey only has some of the memories of the previous. So this is going to be a film based around the 17th incarnation of this deep space astronaut. I actually think that the premise of this is quite interesting, and particularly for a high concept sci-fi movie. I'm quite looking forward to seeing what they do with this. The last movie I'm going to say that to you guys that I'm really, really looking forward to, but I have some reservations about, is the new Ghostbusters film. When Ghostbusters Afterlife was released, I was amazed by how well they did. It really was a worthy sequel to the originals, and I absolutely loved it. I was able to exclusively tell you first when um, it was greenlit for the sequel, but I do have my concerns. This movie is getting to our theatres really, really quickly. And how many times before have we seen when particularly a movie's had a little bit of a surprise hit, which I think, to be fair, Ghostbusters was. Nobody was really sure how well it was going to do, and they were really pleased with just how well it did do, that they may have decided to rush the sequel and get it out, you know, strike while the iron is hot. How many times have we seen Hollywood do that before? And how many times has it absolutely ruined a franchise? I've always believed that this actually was kind of part of the plan and that this movie was already in mind when they were creating the first movie. So when Afterlife was being written, they had this in mind. There were several little nods to it actually in Afterlife. And I actually am hopeful we're going to get something that is well planned and well thought through, not something rushed. TV series that we can look forward to in the next couple of months. Now, there are some really, really exciting things coming in 2024. Fallout is, okay, I did play this game years ago. I've actually just remembered literally this morning when I was, you know, looking at all the different Fallout things that I remember that years ago, I actually did play the first version of this. I've forgotten all about it. It was a game that, yeah, I thought was all right. It's a post-apocalyptic storyline, if you don't know. And Go and check out some of the early clips from Amazon. It does look like this could be very, very interesting. It is made by the same guys that um, were heavily to do with the boys. I do expect to see something quite violent, but the game was. So that would be in keeping with the tradition of that. And I just think this is a series that, if done well, could be really good. 
There's loads of storylines from the games that they get to play with and obviously to inspire the writers to come up with something a bit different as well. I actually think this is a massive universe and if they do it right, oh, it could be good. A series I'm a little bit more hesitant to suggest will be great is the three-body problem. Sam Tarly from Game of Thrones is coming back. Can't remember his real name, but actually he's an actor I quite like. He's in this. The three-body problem, though, is very high concept. I actually read this when I was a kid. It's obviously based on um, a novel back in the day. And I have to tell you, it's a mind bender. You really do have to concentrate. And if this version is true to the novels, which, to be honest, if it's not, there's going to be uproar, then it is going to be something you will need to concentrate when watching. But isn't that a good thing? Doesn't sci-fi, when done well, make you think about it? Doesn't sci-fi, when it's done well, make you maybe change the way you think about things? This story is that type of thing. It is, it's, it's a layered project. There's lots going on. There's lots of concepts. There is really more going on than just what you see on the surface. If you want to see a sci-fi show that, in theory at least, should get you thinking, this is it. Avatar The Last Airbender is one of the most expensive TV shows ever made. It's cost on average 15 to 16 million dollars an episode in fact. Netflix have really thrown money at this. Now we saw the animated cartoon of The Last Airbender. Harris, our young American, genuinely says this is one of his favourite projects ever. It's a TV show that he adored and to be honest I even watched the animated show when I was a little bit younger and I loved it too. The movie that was produced by Midnight something, I can't say his name, um, I'm not going to try, um, by Midnight, was a bit of a disappointment. It didn't quite work and it didn't meet expectations. So can this series do that? Well, we've seen a lot of clips from it. It does look like it's at very least going to be beautifully shot and it will be a feast for the eyes. But will there be the story? Well, there's lots of story there for them to explore. Let's just hope they do it properly. I actually am a little bit in two minds about this. I'm hopeful, but hesitant. Now, Marvel has been a little bit disappointing the last couple of years, I think it's fair to say, on TV and movie. And I honestly, hand on heart, think that Secret Invasion was one of the worst things I've ever forced myself to watch. I would rather put my gentleman sausage in a vice and twist the thing until there's a popping noise, then watch it again. I really, really hated it. So, why am I suggesting that Echo will be any different? Well, from lots of the clips that we've seen, it does look like Echo that is really going to follow on from the um, Hawkeye series we saw um, two years ago now, um, with the um, deaf character, and we're also going to see the Kingpin, greatest character in Marvel. It does feel like, though, that this series is going to follow on more like the original Daredevil series that we saw on Netflix, that sort of vibe and um, style. And let's be honest, the best Marvel stuff that we've had in recent history, on television at least, has been the stuff they did with Netflix. So that's what we want to see. This is going to be action-packed. It's going to be violent. There is some going to be some incredible acting in it, let's be honest. And I really think that this could be Marvel getting back on track. Now, Loki, season two was good, but this has the possibility of being properly brilliant. And actually, I'm being told that the main reason why they've decided to scrap what they'd started with the actual new Daredevil Reborn series and start again, which is something they announced during the strikes, is mainly because of Echo. Initially, they were going to have elements of sort of She-Hulk, in this new Daredevil series. And there was going to be an element to follow on from that. That was decided to be scrapped. And instead, it will have far more of the feel of Echo. Now, I think we can all agree that that sounds like a much better idea. But how about stuff that hasn't actually gone into production yet, but we think will this year? Well, I think there's two major projects that I think we can look forward to. 
Warhammer 40k does look like it's now going into proper development. Henry Cavill went a little bit quiet on the project, but now in recent weeks has done some very promising updates. It does seem that he is going to get his dream and he's going to be able to get to make this series. Right now, they're looking at partners and they're looking at how basically this is going to happen. The development process for a series like this will be lengthy. I actually suspect it'll take up most of the year at least. For example, let's look at the other project, God of War. We've known about that for 18 months and still it hasn't gone into production. I'm being told it's going to go into production very shortly and actually should start filming in the late spring. So Warhammer 40k, we can expect not to see on our screens probably until 2020, maybe even six, but at very least it won't be until 2025. But I'm being told that both of these projects will be going into some level of production this year. Hey, God of War, we might even get to see by the end of this year. Who knows? The last project I want to talk about is one that I have a little bit of trepidation about. Halo Season 2. Now, obviously, this isn't a new series. This is a returning series. So it doesn't really fit with this video. But I wanted to talk about it because I have a source who's actually seen some early cuts of it. And he's telling me, look, if you enjoyed Halo Season 1, you're going to love Halo Season 2. But if you didn't like Halo Season 1, still give Season 2 a chance because it's like a new show. The source who's seen bits of it has basically said, look, they've obviously listened to the um, complaints about the first season and they've done something that feels way more like the Halo games. This is going to be far more visually spectacular for one. There's going to be far more aggressive violence. Think about the first couple of minutes of the first season and imagine that spread throughout the entire season. That's the kind of thing he's talking about. So I'm hopeful that Halo Season 2 will be a second chance for this series because I have to say the first season got a little boring. I actually think I stopped watching it. I did go back to it, but I think I stopped watching it halfway through. So let's hope that season two, though, can fulfill the promise because let's be honest, a bit like Fallout, Halo has a massive wealth of canon. It has an entire universe to explore. It really should be quite easy to make a show that is exciting. Let's hope that Paramount have managed it this time and it'll be on our screens in the next few months. Mm. So those are the things that I'm looking forward to most in the first part of 2024. But what are you looking forward to? Get over into the comments. I'd love to know what series you think will be good and what series you think are going to miss the target. Get into the comments and tell me exactly what you're thinking. If you are new to the channel, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. It really helps us out and you'll never miss any of our new videos. Also, you can go to patreon.com forward slash sidetrack where most of our new videos premiere first and you get to see them without the adverts. Also, go to sidetrack.co.uk, which is our dedicated website and we do articles based on a lot of our videos. So if you want to find out what's actually going on, go and check out the website. As always, please stay safe. Happy New Year and I'll see you soon.